We don't live in a world without conflict. We're not here to stop it. But we do have responsibilities. War does have rules. That's why we're here. Look, in a firefight, things aren't easy. You can't just stop, kindly ask if someone's going to blow your head off. You need to make split-second decisions. But there's a legal, a moral responsibility to ID your targets. Rule one, only engage combatants. On the battlefield, there's a lot of moving parts. Yes, technology's advanced greatly. Combined arms forces can communicate effectively. But the situation can change, sometimes unexpectedly. Rule two, avoid civilian casualties. Your enemy, they could have the upper hand. To defeat them, you may have to take calculated risks. Yet, even in a conflict, even when the situation is desperate, Watch that target. some things no. remain under Why? the protection of the laws of war. Rule three, respect protective symbols. Opportunities in war, they can be few and far between. A high value target can appear and you may need to take direct action, but there's a balance, a calculation, a cost. Destruction must be proportional to what your mission requires. Rule four, limit collateral damage. Simple, right? Look, we know on the ground, the situation can be complicated. We're not telling you to lay down your weapons. We just ask you to remember, actions have consequences. Hey guys, Catfire's Nine here. And today, I'm going to be talking, well, explaining to you IDAP. IDAP stands for the International Development and Aid Project. It is a non-government funded organization or an NGO, and it specializes in responding to humanitarian disasters. It is seen in the Armour 3's Laws of War DLC campaign. And it is also seen in the Beyond Hope campaign with the Tac Ops DLC. It has got a long history with Altus and Stratus. And it is mainly to provide humanitarian support to the civilians of the population of interest. IDAP works alongside the local government forces to help provide aid to civilians in humanitarian disaster situations. And they have only got volunteers that are part of the organization. They do not have active soldiers of the military and they do not align themselves with any faction. So they are strictly a civilian faction, uh, which is the second civilian faction alongside actual civilians like civvies. IDAP's mandate is to clear up mines, rebuild infrastructure that has been destroyed by war, or even build parks and supply water to civilians that can't really get water elsewhere. As has been seen in the Laws of War DLC to provide supplies for NATO airdrops near the Aristus, um, where is the Aristus? Hold up. <laughs> uh, Oreo Castro town to the north, which it's a great DLC if you haven't had it, uh, if you haven't played that DLC before, I highly recommend it. IDAT's personnel, as I said before, are strictly non-combatants. They have got EOD specialists, which are explosive ordnance disposals. They've got paramedics, they've got pilots, and they've also got UAV operators. Since IDAP likes to implement newer technologies into them to help support the civilian populations that are in the disaster regions. Since IDAP is well funded, they have got the 
right amount of cash to pay for all these drones and new age equipment of the 2035 um, area. And they've also got just workers, aid workers, that are just hands that can carry supplies across, they can drive, or they can just help out the civilian population by building stuff. These people can do anything. Now, uh, none of them have got armor, unless they are an EOD specialist. Uh, and Yeah, an EOD specialist. And none of them carry firearms. <sighs> Even in a war situation, the local m military and government will provide security for IDAP in some cases. <sighs> But even in the Beyond Hope campaign, you can see the government forces are not sympathetic to IDAP by halting their convoy so they don't reach an FIA supported town. So most of their vehicles are just civilian vehicles but pulling over to IDAP. <clears throat> and IDAP's facilities as well do not allow firearms. It is a strictly safe zone. They make sure before they treat a patient, they take its gun away and put it in a safe or put it in a corner somewhere. And the IDAP also provides its workers with their own helicopter, so they do not have to rely on the government supplying them pilots and a helicopter. So they've got their own helicopters. And as I said before, they've got multiple drones. These are medical drones, demining drones, and also a couple of other drones like supplying toolkits even, or demining stuff. And they've also got the very first drone in Armour 3, the spy drone, I like to call it, which has got infrared and night vision it's a very beautiful piece of equipment, but I eh, don't know why they got that. And they've also got a UGV, which is a drone-controlled vehicle. It's like a car. Once again, not too sure what that would be used for, since they're not really hunting humans down. <laughs> and IDAP takes in volunteers from all across the world, such as in Europe, America and not it hasn't been seen in Australia or New Zealand but I really hope that they make Australia or New Zealand canon in the IDAP um, in the IDAP volunteer countries so that's about it that's IDAP for you they really only supply stuff rebuild they are non combatant so neither the government or guerrillas can engage the humanitarian efforts of IDAP. And I do, do truly believe that IDAP's got good intentions since they do not have any weapons. If they were to carry weapons, I reckon the guerrillas would engage them in head-to-head -head combat. But sadly, as seen with the TACOPS DLC, IDAP has been prone to abuse from the local government of the Altus Armed Forces and the guerrillas are sympathized with the with IDAP seeming that whatever they mess up IDAP will probably clean it up so that's it Catfire 69 out alright guys Catfire 69 here it turns out it wasn't the end of the episode. Catfire 9 is now. Now, this is going to be my final Factions Explained, unless another DLC comes out next year or this year that has a new faction within the Armour 3 universe and campaigns and all that. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. There's a whole lot of information on all of the factions that I explained within the Armour 3 universe. I've explained CTRG, CSAT, AF, NATO, 
even though NATO and AF you guys are probably thinking what what's there to explain about them well just giving you a further insight if you're new to the um three uh community and also the campaigns but it's been fun but this is a final one unless of course another faction comes out so catfice is nine out